So I want to talk about some facts uh, relating to column relations. Uh, these facts come out of uh, the uh, discussion and the notes and the recordings. Um, about uh, finding a basis for the column space a given, of a given matrix. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, a quiz question from an earlier offering of this course. Of course, we don't give quizzes in this offering of the course, but um, um, here it is, a quiz question from, uh, from the past. And um, uh, let's just uh, take a look at it. So uh, the question says that we're representing a row reduction of a matrix A by the following matrix product. And so let's, before we go on, let's remind ourselves what that means. The original matrix, right, uh, is reduced to its reduced row echelon form, which I'm going to call R, uh, by way of a row reduction. And specifically, that means that this matrix here is representing the row reduction. So that's the first thing to realize uh, about this quiz question is what that matrix is uh, in blue. Okay, it represents the row reduction. Okay. This being given, we have some information about the columns of this matrix A. Those columns of A uh, satisfy this relation. So A1, A2, A3 satisfy that given relation. Um, and there's a, a single uh, unique relation of that form. Okay, so the question then is to figure out what are these numbers, uh, C1 and C2. And uh, just uh, because these quizzes used to go by way of Sakai and wanted students to be able to answer, enter a single number as the answer, um, I uh, uh, said, so, okay, well, compute the sum of these numbers. And of course, then the idea is you have to compute both. Okay. All right. So how does one do this problem? Well, the brute force, unadvisable, <laughs> inadvisable way to do this problem would be to try to find the matrix A directly by inverting. Right, you got to invert a matrix, then you got to multiply a couple of matrices, and then you'd have to find a relation between the column vectors. Bunch of work doing it that way. So the clever way to do this is to take advantage of the hint here, and that is that row operations preserve column relations. Okay, so we have been asked um, to find uh, this relation, a relation between the columns of A. Right. We want to understand these relations. Um, but we know um, that this matrix here, because it represents the row reduction, it consists of a bunch of row operations. Right? So uh, we're getting into the solution at this point. Let's see, let me uh, get all this onto the screen here. Um, this matrix on the left is a bunch of row operations. So it preserves the column relations. Or another way to say this is that um, the relations that we're looking for among the columns of A are the exact same relations as the relations among the columns of R. So the columns of R have this same relationship, okay? Because um, row operations preserve column relations, okay? Um, so yeah, writing that down then, and you know, applying it, applying this relation to the columns of the known reduced row echelon form matrix, uh, we get this equation right here. And of course, uh, at that point, uh, it's just a, a, a little bit of um, arithmetic. Uh, you can look in particular at the uh, sort of the first entries in all of these vectors. And that instantly tells you C1 is equal to two. And uh, likewise, you look at the second entries in uh, all of these vectors and that tells you C2 is equal to seven. So nothing to it. Okay. All right. So um, before I go on to the alternative solution, I wanna point out uh, that this um, segues or this uh, dovetails uh, very nicely with that discussion that we have about um, matrix subspaces. We were talking about finding a basis for the column space of a given matrix. Um, that method capitalized dramatically on this same fact that row operations preserve column relations, right? And we use this fact um, in, uh, in that context uh, to draw conclusions about which column vectors formed a basis for the column space. Here, we're using the same facts to um, do something a little bit different. Okay. 
So I want to show you now another solution, though, to the same question and better, worse, uh, subjective, but uh, certainly an interesting different solution. And uh, by way of demonstrating a, a, a neat fact about these preserved column relations. So a different way to think about column relations. And that is this right here. Column relations are homogeneous solutions. Right. In fact, if you look back in the lecture notes at uh, where we first started talking about the fact that uh, row operations preserve column relations, when we first wrote this down and proved it, we proved it by making this observation that column relations are homogeneous solutions. So in particular, anything that you know that's a relationship uh, between the columns of A, there is a linear combination of the columns of A. If it's a relation, that linear combination is equal to zero. So a uh, column relation can be reinterpreted as, you'll notice here, what is in fact just a solution to that homogeneous system. So really nice fact. Um, it allows you to sort of change the context of the question. The question comes at you as a question about uh, relations among column vectors. Right? It comes at you from sort of a, you might say, a vector's point of view because it's about relations. And we're now going to translate that, though, um, into um, a statement about matrix algebra. Right? So we've translated uh, one question into a different kind of a question. And at this point, everything falls into place really nicely. If we know this is true, we come back up to the original question and ask ourselves, what are we trying to do in the first place here anyway? Uh, we're trying to understand, um, we want to connect this, I'll say, to, you know, what can we conclude from uh, these columns? These, this, is what, this is what I know, right? I know that R matrix. Um, well, I can get to it by taking what I know about A and left multiplying by that matrix, which for convenience of reference, temporarily, I'm just going to call this Okay, product of elementary matrices. So, okay, so let's do that um, and look how e easily everything falls into place. Um, we multiply both sides by E. Still have zero on the right, of course. Um, and then we capitalize on the fact that we know that the result of the row reduction is R. And we have, as desired, just by you know, writing down what we know R is, uh, we have um, uh, that same information morally uh, that we had uh, previously about these numbers C1 and C2. Um, and again, you can multiply this out and look at uh, one term at a time and you get that same result. So neat fact, um, the, um, the, the fact that we've solved this problem two different ways isn't really the point, right? The point is that this question allows us to see two different points of view on the same thing. Uh, so you can interpret um, that row operations preserve column relations. Let's say this differently. You can interpret that column relations are something that's preserved by row operations. It's one way to think about column relations. Another way to think about column relations is that they are homogeneous solutions. Right, so you can think of it from a row reduction standpoint. You can think of it uh, from a uh, matrix algebra standpoint. And it's a nice, uh, nice connection to be able to make, nice uh, different points of view to be able to use in uh, different situations.